I think you and I have become so accustomed to a cheap version of love that it has to prove itself over and over again because we don't trust it. We have been so jaded and broken by people who have said they loved you and then they don't follow through so it's lost its meaning or we just can't trust it. But God's love is different. God's love is tied to his glory. And if God says he loves you and is committed to you, he isn't going to break his side of the promise. For God to say he loves you and then to not love you would be an assault on his name. It would be an assault on his glory. And since God can never do anything that would diminish his glory, God is always consistent in loving you and doing things for your good. Let me explain it like this. Uh, There's an illustration by Francis Chan that's similar to this, but mine is better. Um, So imagine this rope, if you will. Yeah, follow me, Sydney. Don't lose me. Um, Imagine this rope, if you will, is God's cosmic eternal timeline. I know I've been watching Loki. It has nothing to do with that, so forgive me. But um, imagine this rope is just one continuous line, one word or the other, and, 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 and this is eternity, right? And so if you go all the way over here and you keep going for all the way that way in eternity, we have the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the triune God living in perfect harmony for all eternity and eternity past. That at some point he created everything. We have the Genesis story. And if you keep going this way, all the way for all eternity, what you have is the eternity future. For those of us who are in Christ and put our faith in Jesus, we have the blessed hope that we will spend eternity with our Lord with no more pain, no more tears, no more sorrow, nothing but joy and love and full contentment in the presence of our Lord. We get to look forward to that eternity. But somewhere here, is your life. In the grand scheme of eternity, this little mark right here is your life. And and one thing we have to understand is that God is not bound by time, right? God's over here. In the beginning, he could see everything. God's over here in the middle of everything, working his sovereign plan, doing all things for all these kinds of people, doing his will. Over here, he's in the future. He could see everything in the past. And so God is not within time. He's outside of time doing his sovereign will. But you and I are here in this middle, relatively, living our life 60, 70, 80 years. I don't know. And, and, and the, unlike God, who is not bound by time, you and I are bound by time. And so the way we see our life on this timeline is it's only moving forward. And the thing is, we don't even get to see what's ahead of us. We only see what's in front of us. We can't see even, we have to use our memories to remember the past, but we can only see what's in front of us. And so, so I wanna propose to you that perhaps whenever we're praying, whenever we're living this life, whenever we are, we're, we, we are trying to figure out what God is doing, that we are sometimes so nearsighted that we only see what's in front of us that we can't see what God is doing in the bigger picture. That God is maybe doing something in the, God, the grand scheme of things, in the bigger picture, that since you and I are only seeing what's in front of us, that we can't get past the thing that we're ex- currently experiencing. And so, so what I think what the author of John is, is trying to help us understand here, and what I think the Lord wants to teach us, is that if God is for his glory, and his glory is tied to his love, you and I, who are in Christ, must have the confidence that God loves us. If he sent his son Jesus to die for us, he is committed to loving us, and we are to stand on this foundation, believing that God is for us, that God loves us, that God has our best good in his mind in all things. And because of the fact that we can only see what's in front of us, sometimes when we pray, God doesn't answer the prayers like we want him to, or it doesn't seem like how it should be happening, or he's completely silent, completely, and we don't know why he's doing that. But what's actually happening is God, in his sovereign will, is working his plan, and it's actually whatever his action or inaction in your life, he's doing it because he loves you, and it's for your good. It may not make sense right now, It may not feel good, but God still loves you. And he's still working all things together for your good. Now, I say that because in the midst of our time in this this world, we look forward to what's in front of us and it's it's hurting us. We're suffering. We We feel grief 
And it's not that God, when he doesn't move the way you want him to, that he's indifferent about your suffering. No, we're about to read in a couple, in a couple weeks or in a week or two that Jesus knows he's gonna raise Lazarus from the dead. He knows it's gonna happen, yet he still weeps with Mary and Martha. So we have a God who is sovereign over all things, who has all things to control. It still takes time to grieve with us as we are grieving in our lives. So it's not that God doesn't love you, but perhaps there is something that you're not able to see. And like Mary and Martha, at this moment, they don't know why Jesus has left them on red, but what they're experiencing right now is that their brother is dying and Jesus is not answering. And what, what they should be considering is that perhaps the reason why Jesus hasn't responded is because there's something greater that's happening. So instead of going towards our bitterness, instead of going towards anger or feeling like God doesn't love us, we should ask yourself, in the midst of this silence, in the midst of this moment where I don't know why God's not answering my prayer, could I be so nearsighted that I need to look over my situation and see what God may be telling me in the midst of his silence. With that being said, when, when you feel like God has left you on red, don't allow bitterness to take hold of your heart. Allow the silence to teach you what God is doing in the waiting because it's usually in the midst of tears where you trust in God and you grow. So what do we do with prayer? If God is sovereign, he's over the timeline, he, he has this will already orchestrating, he's doing all things, why do we even pray? Because he wants us to pray. Because prayer changes us and God is listening. Psalm 66, but truly God has listened. He has attended to my voice of my prayer. Blessed be God because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. Your prayers are not wasted. Even when and he delays or answers differently, he knows and he hears. God's delays are never arbitrary or random. His delays are from his sovereign love.